welcome to the Slow Living Collective podcast. I'm Amy, wife, mother of two and devoted homemaker. Join me on this journey as we explore the beauty of slow and simple living, where life unfolds at its own unhurried pace. I'll take you through my experiences of slowing down, tending to our allotment plot, finding joy in the little things and making the most of our small home. Together we'll learn to live in harmony with the ever-changing seasons, discovering the magic that lies in embracing the present moment. So let's embark on this enriching adventure towards a more intentional and fulfilling life. Hey everyone and welcome back to another episode of the Slow Living Collective podcast. For today's episode I am really excited to welcome Jenny. She is going to talk with me all about minimalism but more importantly we are going to be talking about imperfect minimalism and I think you guys are really going to love this conversation. So often I think minimalism can come across as this idea of perfection of an aesthetic and you know just living with like bare everything and you know it's so much more than that it it can look like that but it can also look so different as well so join me and Jenny as we dive into imperfect minimalism what it looks like for us how we are changing our mindsets around stuff and how maybe you can find some ways to integrate imperfect minimalism into your lives as well. Hi Jenny, thank you so much for joining me on today's podcast episode. Before we dive into it, do you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about who you are? Yeah, so I'm Jenny. I, um, I'm a mum of three. I live down in Devon on the South Devon coast. Um, my kids are seven and a half five and a half and three and a half now um those halves are really important aren't they? <laughs> um, <laughs> um and I live with my husband and a dog and a tortoise um <laughs> and some fish um and I home educate my kids um so I'm mostly a stay-at-home mum doing that but I also do some breastfeeding support and then I'm a lactation consultant so I juggle a few a few breastfeeding jobs around the home ed life Excellent. So today we are going to talk about minimalism and not necessarily in sort of like a rigid form of minimalism, but just sort of discussing, you know, what minimalism looks like to us and I guess how we imperfectly incorporate it into our lives. Um, So I guess a great place to start is um, just exploring what minimalism really means to you and has your sort of understanding of it evolved over time (laughs) yeah um it's definitely changed over time I was going to say it depends where we where we're thinking about so I think I think at the start I didn't really know much about minimalism it was this big long word that meant people had white houses with not much in them (laughs) um and and kind of yeah something you would flick through and see in a in an interior design magazine. Um, that's, I think that was my view on it. Um, and then I can't quite really remember when I kind of swapped that view. I think I ended up following some, some YouTubers who were kind of doing more everyday minimalism, minimalism with kids. Um, and then it started becoming actually more about, I suppose about decluttering and having less stuff in in my house um but then I suppose it's progressed more than that I think as as I got going with doing that um I didn't have loads of stuff to start with I think I was fairly good at at keeping our inventory level down um but I've definitely scaled down more but I think as I started doing that other other things then fell into that that mindset I think things like schedules and time and um yeah saying yeah just things that aren't necessarily physical (laughs) um they became became more of a minimalist thing so now I think it's just kind of a just anything it encompasses yeah physicalness but also that time and energy side of life as well and just getting away with the minimal amount that's needed or wanted I suppose not just the need yeah I I would say my my opinion on minimalism is the same like you know originally thinking it be like 
I can only own like one pair of jeans and you know I, I, there has been times in my life where I've I've owned a lot of jeans and sometimes I've like gone through them and been like do I really need 12 pairs of jeans right and, but you know as I'm sure I'm sure you probably will agree like sometimes giving birth to children will actually cut that that out it's like well now yeah. I don't fit in 12 pairs of jeans so. yeah see I do only have one pair of jeans but that's because I don't have the time to go and buy a new pair um and I just live in the same pair um, yeah. I'd love two or three pairs that would be my ideal yeah I have a, I have a couple of pairs of jeans but actually I don't wear jeans a lot at all because I find them like really tight around my stomach so I don't wear wear jeans a lot but you know yeah minimalism always has sort of looked to me I guess you know like, like you know white homes you know like one thing in a room and I think I think over time I've realized I think especially when I had children um you know I remember when I had my daughter we didn't know what her gender was going to be before she was born and so you know we loved that we loved the idea of like we were just having a baby and that it wasn't you know one way or the other but that did mean that I noticed very quickly and we're not into like gendered stuff in our home at all you know like pink is for everybody blue is for everybody but when we had her and we got a lot of gifts within 48 hours I remember saying to my husband like our house has exploded in pink like yeah. you know people just get like pink cards like you've had a girl and there was baby grows and dresses and blankets and it was like wow and I think that has just continued I think with I, I certainly think we had so much less when we didn't have children um and you know like toys and I very much noticed like our our nice simple home gets overwhelmed quite quickly yeah and you yeah. definitely harder to keep on top of it with kids um, yeah when it's just you it's it's a much easier task yeah and like more you know decisions like, and your stuff yeah when you're staring at like Christmas and birthdays and you're like oh god I'm gonna get more stuff more stuff is gonna arrive and yeah but I think over time as well we've sort of like expanded our thoughts on minimalism as well to um you know like all areas of our life and just try and declutter it everywhere and I just think like decluttering is just a bit of a work in progress yeah definitely but just always like reevaluating. I get into like a decluttering mode and then I will suddenly <laughs> I'm just like at the end of clearing so I was clearing the kids bedroom yesterday and uh in the end I'm like oh I'm just gonna chuck it like I just end up with a, this final pile and I'm like can I just chuck it all out and sometimes I just ruthless I promised my daughter we would make um like a a glitter a glitter globe thing in a jar and she said can we make it can we make it can we make it tonight and I said well I threw all the jars away last week because I was decluttering <laughs> in the kitchen and I just oh we don't need these nobody ever uses them so I was like now we're gonna have to wait for another jar to become available <laughs> so yeah I do just get into this sort of uh mode where I'm like bin it bin it it's gone get it out and yeah. I uh, think sometimes you do you just have to be ruthless and just just get it done yeah um, and and there will be times you you throw out something and you think oh that's really annoying um yeah. you know normally it is it's the same in my house is recycling type stuff as well yeah. <laughs> but that suddenly is important for an art project or something they want to create but like a neighbor will have it or my mum will have it or yeah. like or it'll wait a week and yeah. until we've run out of the next thing that comes in a jar yeah um I think I think there's been very few times that I've actually properly regretted throughout getting rid of something yeah um yeah I can't really I, to be honest probably only one thing maybe two um that I've actually seriously regretted um 
and one of them was really pathetic and it was it was a <laughs> it was a making of the Pride and Prejudice BBC version book <laughs> um, and I got rid of it because I was like I don't look at it anymore I have no time and then I showed the series to my eldest and she loved it and she was talking about the costumes and I was like I'm sure I've got this book and I can <laughs> find it and I was like I think I got rid of it but you know a second hand you know online I managed to pick up a copy for £1.50 we've replaced it like yeah. no harm was really done yeah I think most of the time I can't think of a time where I've regretted anything uh you know sometimes I'm like oh I've got one of them and then I think no I've got rid of that I recently like I said did the kitchen I said to my husband, we didn't have a lot of stuff in our kitchen anyway. Um, I try and we have a quite a small kitchen. So, you know, I try and sort of keep on top of it. But inevitably, drawers or cupboards get a little bit out of control eventually just through living. And uh, I was like, I'm just going to sort out these drawers. And I, he, he came downstairs because he, he works at home full time. And I said, I've got all of these like plastic boxes and we don't really use you know like Tupperware because we've moved to sort of more like we've got glass ones or stainless steel and so we don't really like to use a lot of plastic anyway and I was like I've got all of these and they don't either they they don't have a tub to go with a lid or they don't have a lid to go with the tub and he like he was like oh there's like a blue one and he was like well we've got I've seen the other bit of that and I was like no they're not here I've pulled everything out and he was like I'll oh, just bin them then the very next day <laughs> I was in, I've got a very, very small utility room. Like the people who owned this place before us basically turned the cupboard under the stairs into utility room. And uh, I was in there and the top of it, it's just a really awkward, uh, like I put my washing machine, but it, it's like a really awkward, I don't know, worktop because it's got like the you know the stairs going up over it so nothing can really be stored well on it and it often gets like I just hide stuff in there that I don't want anybody else to find you know like I've got some Christmas presents sitting in there so nobody ever looks in there and I pulled something like pulled a box back and I was like oh no it's all of the lids and tubs that went with the guys in the drawer and <laughs> they've already gone now so yeah oh so I said to my husband I found them all you were right that blue one did exist so I was like but now we're in the at the same point because all of the previous ones have gone <laughs> so all we can do is get so it was like an accidental declutter that was we uh, because I dare say I would have been like oh let's keep two of them and yeah, it was probably <laughs> quite good yeah <laughs> it worked out quite well I was and it was like literally the next day so yeah I was like well now we've got no tub so <laughs> we'll just have to live <laughs> but you know they just don't get used and yeah I just think yeah. um sometimes you accidentally get rid of stuff and uh yeah but that's an example of kind of having to go over things like I, I bet at one point you were using them lots and they were in constant use and life's moved on you've changed the way you do things and then suddenly it's no longer needed and you just keep it because it's always been there and yeah just getting rid knowing yeah, I, that you've they've had their time they've done their job yeah and, yeah I find in the kitchen as well, like a lot of our kitchen stuff we got when we got married on our wedding gift list. And so I'm like, I can't get rid of the gravy boat because so-and-so got us, got that for us. And then it's like, but, but we're not, we don't use it. So, you know, maybe we should free it so it can go to the charity shop and somebody else can enjoy putting their gravy in it. And so, yeah, it's <laughs> just being... I don't know, just being able to let go, I think, of things sometimes and know that they've served their purpose. Like you say, they serve their purpose and just let them go on to their new life. Yeah. And it's yeah. the same with, like, um, the kids' clothes as well. I mm -hmm. like to – they don't always like to release them. And <laughs> sometimes my daughter's like, where's my watermelon dress? And I'm like, goodness me – your watermelon dress you had it when you were 18 months old <laughs> you're nearly five <laughs> you're not gonna fit in it anymore where is it though no oh, I don't know it must be in the washing pile because <laughs> if yeah. I don't know that it's gone she's just distraught but it's, eventually it's hard isn't it yeah and so they had uh 
my son loves to wear a dress. Well, they both love to wear a dress. She will wear a dress 24 seven. And now he sees her in a dress all the time. He always wants to wear a dress. And I incidentally had two dresses the same in like two different sizes. Um, but now I've got, even he's grow, outgrown the smallest version. And she's like, where's that ice cream dress gone? And I was like, I had to give it away because it didn't fit anyone. And she's like, no, we like to match. <laughs> so, so yeah, it's just balancing everybody's, uh, you know, understanding is difficult. Yeah. And that's really hard with minimalism. Like what? I, I I struggle that um, other people in the household have different views on whether things need to stay or not or whether we can bring new things in and it's yeah it's that compromise isn't it around yeah it what's important and with the kids sometimes just making that decision for them because it has to be because we're the ones who are dealing with all these thousands of items of clothing all over our house so it's it's us who's going to have to keep track and wash and check they fit um so sometimes we just have to make the decision don't we and yeah and I think as well like I didn't realize before I became a mum how much of a full-time job it is sorting out children's clothes washing it drying it yeah. putting it away getting the making sure the current size is fine getting the next lot coming in the stuff going out it's like it just blows my mind and sometimes I'm like oh, I wish we could have less and even when I get rid of it it's still too much yeah. and, and cl clothes are so tricky we like my youngest has masses of clothes up there we're not we're not very minimalist in her in her wardrobe because she's got her older sister's stuff that's passed down yeah we had some beautiful stuff from a friend her youngest is about nine months older so it's been the perfect kind of age to pass things down to her and she's got some lovely stuff like loads of scandy stuff and uh, like I can't say no to that <laughs> like, yeah um and and I know that some of you know she'll wear through some of it where they're at forest school and things you know they things get thrown away because they genuinely are just worn out um but yeah it's really hard to to say no to like new clothes because clothes get used but then it ends up with this ridiculous amount um but I am enjoying just getting rid of them once she's grown out of them now because yeah. before I used to keep everything for younger siblings but now once it's done with her I'm like right out of the house as soon yeah. as we can <laughs> Yeah, we're very lucky in that um, one of our friends has given us loads and loads of stuff. And, you know, I'm I'm always like down in my garage. I've got like storage boxes um, like because it was just like given to me in bin bags. And then it was just chaos, absolute chaos down there. So I bought some storage boxes, sorted them out into sizes. So I and it's labeled all the boxes. So it's like, right, this is two to three and three to four like I've got clothes out there for definitely well probably for the both of them until they're at least like nine and but I can't say no because it's like free secondhand clothes and you know even if they are just you know used for he used to like particularly keep some you know some of the clothes that maybe had some stains or what or whatnot on it for like forest school and things and yeah I, I don't even I've just redone her clothes because she's just sort of really grown out of like a three to four and is more in a four to five and yeah I I've got too much like there is nothing that I need to fill the gaps in for and my son, my son's stuff is even worse. <laughs> He's got even more stuff. And I, you know, like the worst thing is when I bring it in from the garage, I always give it like a wash because it's dry, but, you know, cold out there. And then I'm like, oh, no, now I've got to put all this stuff away. And yeah, it's just, yeah. it's a lot. I mean, I, I always think like, oh, I've got quite a lot of clothes, but actually I just recently sorted out my clothes and I was like I actually don't have that much compared to them yeah and yeah it's it is it's just a full-time job and it's really difficult and like you say like managing everybody else's expectations and sometimes it's like well I'm gonna make that decision <laughs> that we're not gonna keep a dress that nobody fits in <laughs> 
or it gets mentioned well we could have it for the dolls and I'm like I just I can't <laughs> I can't yeah. <laughs> the dolls have got plenty of clothes that's another topic as well <laughs> but yeah it's just I do think you know like minimis, mi minimalism does you know just evolve over time and you know things change I dare say when the children are all so much older you know there'll be less toys and you know it's it's just I, I was just thinking actually like when you said about regretting getting rid of something one of the one things I regretted getting rid of was when I had my daughter we had a snooze pod um for her to sleep in the one that attaches to the bed and we sold it on when we were done with it and uh <laughs> because we thought we was only gonna have one child that was added like our decision we're just gonna have one child and then I sold it um, literally so she turned one literally just as the pandemic started and I'd literally it'd been in my garage for about six months and we sold it about the same time as she turned one I was devastated as Ray had to go down to the garage and be the one that helped them load it and I was up over. sobbing like, oh, my snooze pod <laughs> and then we obviously decided to have another child about six months later <laughs> <laughs> and, so, and then I was like we're gonna need another snooze pod <laughs> and so we yeah. did get it but we co-slept um with my son so he didn't even really use it so when I got rid of it the second time I passed it on to a friend it just gave it away that time um you know somebody it was somebody I used to go to school with and just let her have it but that time I had no attachment at all <laughs> get it out um and Ray yeah. said we're definitely not having more children and I was like I'm not going to make you buy the snooze pod again <laughs> for the first time <laughs> that is a lot of money to be laying out but um sometimes I think you have to approach these things like the money is spent oh uh, you know yeah. yes there are ways you can recoup it you know like through selling it on but sometimes it's just I've spent the money the money's gone anything back will be a bonus yeah, um, absolutely and and you're you know money's important like we don't have loads of money we're walking yeah. around um you know we need to be careful but actually so is my time my energy my emotional labor dealing with the stuff and I think sometimes yeah you take that hit of yeah I spent money on it and I'm getting rid of it and in some cases yeah you end up buying buying it back um but at least at least I'm not yeah wasting all that energy and and yeah, just that logistics of sorting out, moving stuff, keeping it clean, keeping it stored right. You know, all that, all that takes time. And our time's important. It is, it is. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, over time, minimalism has gained this sort of like negative reputation as having to be like perfect. Like, like we said, you know, this specific aesthetic as what minimalism looks like. And I think probably, you know, the internet doesn't doesn't help does it like a minimalist aesthetic is like nothing there why everything um but you know in reality we can incorporate minimalism into you know so many aspects of our lives so what are your thoughts on the concept of you know imperfect minimalism and how it allows individuals maybe to find a sort of balance in simplifying their lives yeah, well, I think I think we're we're all different, aren't we? And and like, I think part of the minimalism is kind of what we need, but I think there's that element of what we want as well, and like what what brings us joy. That sounds very very condo and all that, but <laughs> like it's it's really true that like we've all got our things that we like. Um, you know, I've got a friend with a million and one books, like literally she's probably got a million books in her house because that's her thing. Um, and, you know, for her, she's she's not perfect minimalist because she's got all these books. She doesn't need all those books. Like <laughs> she doesn't read all those books. Um, she has two kids as well. So she's very busy. Um, but, you know, that's it doesn't have to be perfect. That's what that's what brings her joy. And, you know, it's it's I think picking the people picking the areas that are important or have the biggest impact I suppose on their life so things like the toys and just general kind of cluttery 
bits and bobs around the house. That's what I just needed to be fairly perfect on, actually. We are very scaled back on some of those things. Um, but things like craft stuff, like for the kids, like we've got a little mini craft shop going on here. Like <laughs> we've got everything that we need because that's that's what works for us. And the kids, you know, kids' art stuff is all over the house. There's creations everywhere, pictures on walls. You know, my daughter's bedroom is full of toilet roll creations <laughs> um, because that's, that's you know that's us and that it wouldn't you would look at that and you would think well they're not minimalist like look at all this stuff um so I think yeah picking those what what bits are important to you to be minimalist or helpful and which bits you can let slide um is quite quite important and yeah that perfectionist like you say it's it is an ongoing process as well so yeah not expecting it to to suddenly be clear and nothing there like there's I think it's almost like layers at a time when you when you declutter your house you kind of take off those bits you can really easily get rid of and then you probably go through it a second time and get rid of more and it, you just kind of picking away at this decluttering um, and yeah you don't suddenly overnight get this yeah, perfectionist white house which you, know, you probably don't want any way yeah that's probably not your end goal <laughs> yeah I um I agree you know um toys is something that we have scaled back and we I guess get around it a little bit by doing toy rotation so we have more toys than we have out at any one time um and that works, you know, my two are very small and that works because they're suddenly like, oh, oh, this toy, my he son. Too. I mean, he's, he's because, you know, he's two, he's not long turned two. And he's like, oh, I've never seen this before when in reality, you know, he has lived with it before, but doesn't remember it. And so, yeah, it just um, sort of, it's very much uh, encourages them, I think, to they play very differently when we've got fresh toys um but it's something as well toys is definitely an area that stresses me out even though two-thirds of it is always out of my sight the you know the other I'm all, always thinking about toys mainly because I'm always picking them up <laughs> and that I don't think it would matter how many toys were in this house I always think that there, there could be less <laughs> because I'm spending all my time like encouraging should we tidy them up now um but I just think that you know with toys we're always just thinking do we have all the pieces if we don't have all the pieces why are we keeping it you know it's if it's broken why are we keeping it if we don't play with it several times over then maybe we could give it to another child um one of the we just got some we just did toy rotation recently and one of the best toys in this house which is so ironic to me but it's the it's an iron a plastic iron that I got my daughter from the charity shop because I was looking for something in the charity shop and she picked up this iron that was like 50p and she was like can I have this and I was like sure is the most used toy they iron everything which is ironic to me because I haven't ironed anything <laughs> so when they they like lay blankets out across their little table and iron them like once my husband said where did they get where did they see this happen <laughs> where did they learn that <laughs> it didn't happen here <laughs> and so yeah it's just um it's funny the the toys you know actually you know I spent 50p and it's like one of the best toys every time it comes yeah. around everyone's like the onion and I think yeah. it's supposed to have batteries in it so I think it probably makes noise but it didn't when we got it you don't need that. I'm not gonna change that <laughs> I'm not gonna change that <laughs> nobody knows um yeah, it can be a really sticking point for people because we're, oh, I, I, we just sold this thing that there's this, there's this magic toy or this, this will help our develop, kids development in this way or this way or, you know, there's a lot on, on social media at the moment about, you know, the wooden Montessori toys that aren't necessarily yeah. Montessori anyway, yeah. um, just happen to be wooden and nice and quite expensive most of the time. 
and yeah. yeah and it it tugs at us doesn't it like as parents we want the best for our kids and like we've got all these adverts you know coming at us left right and center whether they're obvious adverts or just recommendations yeah. um and and it you just think oh I need that I need that and and it just get an add in birthdays and Christmases where the rest of the family are also thinking oh this is the perfect gift you just yeah end up with so much we've got really minimal on toys we actually have very few toys in our house um to the point that when people come around I think to start with they're sometimes like um where are the toys what are they, <laughs> what's my kid going to play with on this play date at your house um but you know but they they Feel hours and hours and hours playing playing with them and it's amazing you know which ones get used and and even then there's a few I can think of now that I could probably get rid of they don't really reach for and um, they probably wouldn't really notice if they were gone what well, my eldest would she notices everything but she wouldn't care <laughs> yeah um but they they just create create these things out of them we've got a couple of little baby toys still hanging around those little stacking discs and one of those ones where you bash it with the hammer and bash mm. the pegs out yeah. but I've left those because they get played with most days still because the discs become pizzas or mm -hmm. islands or lily pads they were the other day for a frog and the pegs are often used as some kind of token or special walkman kind of electronic buzzing your your hero kind of gadget thing like they're always just so they're so creative with it even though it's, yeah. it's a couple of wooden baby toys um it's yeah yeah we've got it's some good tiny, when you butter. yeah we've got some tiny wooden blocks that have got like numbers and letters on them and they're quite small ones and I always like put them out on a train it's one of the things there are a few things that I leave out all the time um for them to play with that often gets put in the saucepan in the play kitchen and made into they're often like a soup or we've got some round discs they were a credit card uh the other day in some in my daughter's little purse so yeah they're just some of these things just become other things the blocks have never yet been used to learn the alphabet or anything <laughs> but they are always used in like you say soup or pizza or or whatever they just become other things and me and my daughter were having a conversation the other day because we got the Argos book which is a lot thinner than it used to be when I was a kid it was tiny and she said oh, I want the Barbie house and I said I am not spending 300 pounds on a Barbie house <laughs> a plastic house so I didn't it, I didn't say it quite like that but in my head I was like I am not spending 300 pounds on a Barbie firstly 300 pounds is a heck of a lot of money and she has my old Barbie dream house that I had as a kid which you know it's fine I I had I enjoyed it you know isn't it? it was a big deal when I got the Barbie dream house but you know this thing is 300 pounds of plastic that is just gonna get abandoned and you know I so I explain the the funniest thing I think was that um I said you know mummy and daddy won't be able to afford that's a lot of money. 300 pounds is a lot of money. And mummy and daddy could not afford that on one present. And so she said, maybe we could ask Father Christmas. And I thought, no, because I found him too. <laughs> and so I explained, you know, like, no, Father Christmas doesn't bring toys that are that expensive. Um, Father Christmas brings smaller toys um, and you know she has mentioned a few times like I want the Barbie dream house and I've you know I very much said you know we won't be getting the Barbie dream house for Christmas because you know it is just it's 300 pounds <laughs> but also it's just one of those things that's bits are going to break they're going to get lost and eventually it's going to be 300 pounds of nothing I could spend 300 pounds and we could have you know we could have a, a weekend away or you know an experience yeah. we can pay for us to you know our memberships for the zoo and and things like that things that we can appreciate all the time and I know children especially young children are probably more like no but I want the Barbie dream house <laughs> and yeah. and it's very difficult because like you say we're being sold to all the time and sometimes I'll look at 
uh, things, I'll, I'll open the Amazon app and then it's like, it's Prime Day and I'm like, oh, do I need anything? Like, yeah. I don't need anything. And yeah. we were... It's a hard battle. when It you, is. I paid really big bucks to, to sell us stuff. Yeah. Like, they paid a lot of money to create these efforts and all these kind of sneaky messages to, to get us to buy. And, yeah. yeah. And make us, yeah, and make us think that we need things and that our life will be better if we have it. Um, yeah, I, we were just like joking the other day with my husband. We went, we were walking through town, and I said, "Oh, let, let's pop into Pound Stretcher." And I'm not really much of a shopping person. Um, and he was like, "What do we need in Pound Stretcher?" And I was like, "No, no, no. We let Pound Stretcher tell us what we need. <laughs> we, we don't go in there knowing what we want. We let Pound Stretcher tell us. That's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> we we didn't end up buying anything anyway. But just you know that like." Well, maybe I do need something. And 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 it's the same, you know, when you open, you know, open Amazon or even, you know, social media, like they're selling all the time, whether it be obvious or not so obvious. And yeah, we are just constantly being sold out. And sometimes it's not it's I don't think it's easy to to stay away from it and not fall into the trap of it. Yeah, I think I, I'm a lot better at it than I, I was. It helps. I'm quite stingy. So my, my natural instinct is to save money anyway. Um, yeah. So that helps give me a little bit of a battle against it. But even sometimes, yeah, I, I still fall for those things. Like I'll walk into a shop and end up walking out with more than I went in for. Like we, we all do. Um, but I think it gets better. The, the more you do it, and the more you kind of minimalize your house in terms of physical things, the more you feel the impact when you do bring things in. So if you've got loads of stuff in your house and you come back with two bags full of shopping from Pound and Stretcher, it, you don't notice it. It just <laughs> it comes in. But once you've got down to quite a minimal level, you then see it and you notice it and you think, oh, gosh, there, there's these two bags worth of stuff. And it that that's when I found it much, much easier when I got down to that that lower level and it just it just made me I see I, I walked I went to you know one of those B&M or home bargain shops the other day because I needed something I can't remember what it was now but there was there was something I went in for and I just walked around and just just looked at everything and suddenly saw everything very differently and I know ne last year I didn't do that last year I was still walking around going oh look at that lovely basket there oh look at that oh look at that and I know that's what I was doing last year before Christmas in that lead up where things are building up this year I literally walked around and all I could think of was oh my gosh look at all this stuff what a load of rubbish like it just my mindset has completely changed and that's just in a year and I don't think I've dramatically decluttered but it's just just that time of keeping going with with thinking that way and suddenly it it's a bit of a, a bit of a switch um I yeah. suddenly see things for for really what they are and those secret advertising messages just suddenly seem to lose their impact on most things I'd say there are still things that still can be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's it is difficult um you know like just walking around I think even sometimes the supermarket if I, we often do our, and we have since we, we had our, our first um, child, we've often done online shopping and we still do it today, but we will sometimes pop to Sainsbury's or Morrison's where we live. And, you know, then we always end up with more. And I've noticed we've been, especially through the summer, I would say, you know, we'll often like go for a walk and we'll oh, stop at Sainsbury's on the way back. And I've noticed, and I'm actually even thinking like having a revelation while I'm talking about it now, that we allocate a certain amount of money for our food budget. And I've always considered it to be quite generous in terms of what I think maybe the average person would spend. And we've always had it quite generous, which has definitely helped with like the rising cost of food because we've been able to absorb that cost because that's always been there and you know what it used to be was at the end of the month we would just have extra um and therefore 
you know we'd put it wherever it would always get spent somewhere but um it was the fact that we would have extra left over and more recently obviously the cost of food is much higher than it used to be but that full budget is now spent and I wonder as well if some of that is to do with popping to Sainsbury's or Morrison's more frequently and therefore we maybe we are buying more than what we would normally buy because usually it was a sort of a you know we have a sort of master list of and then we have a think about like okay what we're going to eat this week and and purchase that and haven't really gone outside of that but then when you are out and about you're like "Mm, yeah sure I could eat some lemons or or whatever and so it it does mount up so I actually think on the basis of this discussion when I go back to try not to go to the supermarket and then see if that makes an impact because I, I, I was saying to my husband yeah. just today, like we are spending the entirety of our food budget and more potentially. Um, and, you know, we, like I said, I, I think we have allocated more than what is average. So we are hemorrhaging it somewhere. Um, yeah. And I know everything is is expensive and more expensive than it was. Um but yeah, I definitely think some of the messaging, you know, even in the supermarket, you know, like, oh, I could get yeah. I could get two packs of them and but I actually only I actually only wanted one and we'll actually only eat one and I mean we're And it's it's really hard to say no. Like when they when there's a like double size something and it's only twenty P more than the other one, like do you oh, get that then? And yeah, you're you're spending you are spending more money than mm the new plan to when you first went in um and and again again there's massive massive thought and lots of money behind those supermarkets you know they pay those companies pay loads of money to have their their products at certain places the extra banners you know all that stuff because they know that that makes us buy it and it, it works <laughs> and and it's like I notice as well like um by doing online shopping when I, I do my online shopping with Morrison's and when I hit like okay I've done everything let me check out and it's like did you forget and it has like I don't know maybe like five items that are probably like in my favorites that I've ordered multiple times and it's like no I don't want that at the moment and then you're like no I didn't forget that leave me alone and you go to the next stage and it's like have you thought about and then there's like this whole page of things that are maybe on offer and I mean actually there is where I'm always like no no and if you think about it that is exactly like when you're standing at the checkout and you're like do I need that but I was standing queuing for petrol like the other day and I was like do I need a double decker and I'm like no I don't need a double decker (laughs) Like, but I do want one. And it's there <laughs> screaming, like, buy me, buy me, I'm here, you want me. Yeah, and like the problem with our local petrol station is it's a BP and an M&S food. Like you can very easily Ooh. go in there and suddenly you've dropped like 40 pounds on like lettuce and little sausages. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's pretty pricey. So you do have to be careful when you go and get petrol. Um. But these things, they're there for a reason. They're there to catch the people that are standing in the queue. Like, well, I didn't think I needed pet insurance, but maybe I do. (laughs) And, you know, it's like you say, it's placed exactly where it is for a reason. And, um, yeah, and, you know, like you say, people are paid lots of money to get their advertising in the right place, you know, and market it to the right people. And, uh, you know, we're just a byproduct of it, trying to survive with all this messaging, like, pinging at us all the time. And, it, yeah, it can be can be sort of difficult. Um, so I guess, um, like, you know, we talked about minimalism being not having to be perfect. Is there any sort of particular area in your life that you'd say you struggled to apply minimalism to or you know how did you overcome that if you did um well I've mentioned a little bit like I I struggle to apply it to the crafty kind of side of things but then 
I don't think I want to or need to. So I'm not sure if that really is a is a problem. I think my my biggest issue is is those smaller, well meaning people <laughs> <laughs> giving giving small little things. It's the it's those small little bits and pieces that that are hard and you can't say no to them because mm. it is rude it's rude like <laughs> um like big gifts for christmas and things like that i we've actually come to a place where that's quite good um me and my siblings don't buy for each other's kids we decided a few years back we're just not going to do that so that was easy we wiped out a load of presents that way um and saved all our our time like it was only me and my sisters buying them like <laughs> the kids don't buy them for each other yeah um grandparents have got very good at just buying books and clothes which we can kind of manage with or or asking for exactly what it is but it's all the kind of little gifty things and bits and bobs that are I find really hard um so an example is we were at a home ed group last week um and we had a bit of a Halloween-y kind of thing um and the lady who does a lot of the running of the group had brought along some little bits and pieces you know the kind of things for the kids those party bag type things and I just oh I was just she did you know it's well-meaning she wants to give it those are really hard because you can't you can't stand there and say no partly because it's really ungrateful and rude like she had gone out of her way to get these bits for the kids to bring them a bit of happiness also my kids are there with you know 15 16 other kids receiving their thing like I you you just can't do that so I think that that is an area that is is really hard Mm -hmm. um and I'm not sure what the answer is to that one (laughs) Um, other than to to hope that with time other people start to see those things as as hard work and not worth it um but yeah it's it's that kind of thing um, I think with my eldest, she is she's seven and a half now, and she's very much into all those little things. Like, <laughs> um, and she's got her own room now, so at least I can I can hide them away in her room. So yes, she <laughs> takes her room mostly. I say to protect them from the little one because you know three year olds get everything and destroy everything. <laughs> um, but partly so that I don't have to <laughs> see it. <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's a, I think that's just the hard, hard bit of it. Those kind of things that just seem to, I don't know, they still seem to lots of people normal and it seems normal and nice to give those things. And, and it's really hard. It's really hard to, to deal with them. Yeah, and they're all, yeah. always the, when you're tidying up, they're always the bits that you're left with at the end in a pile. And I'm like... <laughs> why do these things have no home and it's because they have no home yeah <laughs> not in yeah. my home anyway and it is it is difficult it's really difficult to like you say you you don't want to be rude and you you're grateful for these things and yeah uh, I would say that that's that's a a problem in my home as well the little the little bits it that is. just yeah and I think from the environmental perspective as well, I, I really struggle with it because of that as well, because they are often small plasticky things mm. um, yeah. <laughs> that do break <laughs> um, quite easily. So I think that I, I struggle, yeah, not just from the actual managing it and having it in my house now, but the fact that it was even produced in the first place. I, I don't know. I think it comes to me now. It, I I think other people would probably think I was mad. Like, what is the harm of a little, you know, spider ring or whatever it is? Um, but to me, it just comes with all this extra stuff kind of attached to it. That plastic, where's it going to go? How is that made? Like, not just, you know, where am I going to put it in my house? And what am I yeah. going to do when it breaks? And my three-year-old has a tantrum about it because it's broken. And yeah, it's all yeah and then even you know it's broken and then you throw it away and then you're like well it's just going to go to landfill where it's going to live for the next 500 years and we recently cleaned out our garage um because it's out of control my house largely looks like it's in control it's not always but largely <laughs> looks like it's in control 
my garage is just this place where we've got things like books that are stored and we had this question recently because we have um you probably know this but maybe other people don't you know we've had problems with um the outside of our building and our cladding and and everything like that and because that also then encouraged damp we lost loads of books that were on our bookcase so we like just pulled everything out got them into plastic boxes and stored them down in our garage because you know we wanted to save them um but now we're at the point where at some point in the hopefully not too distant future we will move and I'm like we've got all of these books and then it's I find books really difficult still it's there are books that I've got out there from like when I did my degree and I'm like I spent a lot of money on these books and they were really hard to get and I'm am I but realistically am I gonna read them again I don't think so like <laughs> although I still do stuff related to my degree which was history I do stuff with local history I'm involved in local history projects the Nazi party between you know like 1939 to 45 is not necessarily something that I anticipate and I don't know if I suddenly do decide to redo that then you know maybe I just repurchase the books um, yeah like I did with my project. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is difficult, I think, isn't it? Because we buy, yeah. when we buy books, we are, you know, like we often, when we buy books, you know, we take good, like good care of them and we take pride in them. And there's some really good books down there, but then are they any good if no one's reading them? Yeah. And are we yeah. ever going to read them? Yeah, books, books have been a tricky thing. Me, I've, I think I've I think I've lost it now. Um, I feel like I'm winning on the books now. But yeah, it was really really hard for me. Books. Yeah. I had I was one of those people with lots of bookshelves filled with books um, for a very long time. Well, ever since I was a kid, I had books you know lined up really nicely ordered. You know that perfect kind of library bookshelf. Um, and especially with home educating the kids, like books are a really vital part of our day um but I have got a lot better at well getting rid of them so I got rid of all of nearly all of my ones that I'd read knowing that I wasn't going to read them again um I kept a key for you like literally um Captain Corelli's mandolin because that really meant something to me um especially as my grandma had brought it so that was a really sentimental book um my Jane Austen series I kept them um, and like one or two others, a, a book that used to be focused far away tree, but it was my mum's copy, like an old one. My I've literally got. My favourite book, my favourite. <laughs> I have got a newer version of it that the kids are allowed to read. The, the old copy is is precious and has my mum's like handwriting in from when she was a kid. Oh, so no. They don't touch that. Yeah. But literally about 10 books I kept out of, I don't know how many. Um, and the kids' books I've done better on, um, I think non-fiction ones. I used to go into a charity shop and see a book and think, that's brilliant. You know, what a fantastic book about ocean life for 20p. I must have it. Yeah. Um, and now I, I don't actually do that anymore. I, I very rarely buy a non-fiction one anyway from, from charity shops because I just think... I can get them from the library yeah. um, and I do I just get them from the library unless they're a one that covers a big range of things so if it's a kind of more of an encyclopedia type thing or something that covers quite a few topics then I might buy it but if it's quite specific you know a type of animal or <laughs> or you know something about space I'm just like I don't need it I can I can do the library and then I don't have to ever go through that do I get rid of it do I <laughs> what do I do with it I just it has to be returned at some yes. point <laughs> when the renewals run out and I can get it out again yeah. um, if I want to and um, yeah I it's it's hard though books, yeah books are books are important to to us book lovers <laughs> they've got yeah. that tie yeah I mean we uh, we use the library a lot um for the for the kids but actually I haven't used it much for myself and it was only when I went when I just was with my daughter and my son was at home the other week that I actually had time 
so I was like oh I'm gonna look at uh, uh, what other books they've got because usually I'm just like make a beeline for the kids section and you know we sort of read books and pick the books we want in there but um yeah I mean I mean I think I'm I think I'm gonna get rid of all my books that are down in the garage because I, I couldn't even apart from my my four book collection of the the, the Nazi regime <laughs> which is probably very niche um but you know and that it was a massive um part of my degree I don't think I could tell you what else is down there I honestly can't yeah. think of yeah. a single book that is down there and so therefore you um, no yeah. they, they could... so, there is a benefit to that kind of packing away things in like some people use that as a technique don't they get a cardboard yeah. box put things on it in it put a date on it and when it gets that date get rid of it because yeah. unless you've gone and you've actually sought that object out to pull it out you don't you don't need it and once it's yeah once it's gone that's that's it you, you won't remember what's in there yeah. I kept I kept one one of my first degree books I kept the like the main one that was kind of the the reference and I think that was probably more for sentimental reasons but that was the way I did it I thought I just which is the one I need to keep <laughs> or want to keep pick that one and I got rid of the rest um one day I might get rid of that one too I don't know but at the yeah. moment I can cope with my 10 or so books so <laughs> Yeah, I, I, you know, I'll keep my local history books because, you know, I still do that. But, but yeah, if you're in East Hertfordshire, there's probably a four piece Nazi party <laughs> book series coming to a charity shop near you sometime soon. <laughs> Snap it up. <laughs> yeah, it was so expensive. <laughs> I spent all my student loan on that, that series. But yeah, yeah um, you know, I think. Yeah, my husband is a lot sort of more minimal than I am anyway, but books is something that he, like when we were talking about what we're going to do about the books, he was like, I don't want to get rid of them. <laughs> so that maybe is his area of, uh, you know, the thing that he wants to keep hold of. But yeah, I, I, I guess because I'd maybe because I do a lot of the sort of decluttering and stuff in the house. Um, You know, I'm the, the first one to declutter cushions I mean my husband if my husband lived by himself he wouldn't have a cushion so there is I was gonna say does he buy any cushions <laughs> <laughs> he was really pleased when Ikea near us closed down <laughs> because now now all the Ikeas are too far away so he knows that like more blankets and more cushions are not going to come into his life <laughs> yeah. so yeah no he's not a cushion man it's particularly as well since we've had children because anybody with children that will know that all the cushions just end up on the floor all the time and you just spend your whole yeah. life just picking cushions up it's just very, I mean I just got rid of most of our cushions as well because I send them on to another life yeah but yeah it is difficult and I think you know it's like I said just this work in progress all the time and just like checking in like how did things get so decluttered again and where have I fallen off the wagon and yeah. you know we live in a, a very small place and so it's always been like this balance of trying to fit in um but also I I often think like this home is plenty big enough there's pl it's plenty big enough for everybody to have a bed everybody to have somewhere to sit place for us to wash and eat and, and everything the stuff is what makes it a lot and so you know I've always tried to keep it so it feels very bright and airy and you know one day I will get <laughs> doors for my wardrobe nobody <laughs> listening will be able to see this but where I <laughs> to record is my wardrobes I mean they're fairly organized at least <laughs> yeah, but, not bad. Um, I was looking at my background too and I was thinking it's mostly just washing up to be fair. <laughs> it's, it's not too bad and a bake <laughs> yeah we but, share our wardrobes so with, with the children so this well now everyone's going to be like I don't know what you're talking about but I have a half, yeah. half the wardrobe and the and my daughter has the other half and then my husband and my son share but we got these wardrobes in in lockdown in like one of the like the first lockdown I think so it was like delivered sort of like you know 
under like heavy armored masks and gloves and everything <laughs> and we were like oh when lockdown's over we'll go and pick the door these are ikea so we were like we'll go and pick what doors we want i don't know <laughs> lockdown was <laughs> what three years ago we have not yet been back to pick the doors so i think i'm just going to wait till we move house now yeah uh, yeah and I, I think said moving my- house can be a really good time to to do to do those things. Yeah. Like we had our kitchen done, which is in the background here. Um, I can't remember when it was quite probably longer ago than I think. It's probably about four four or five years ago now. Um, but we use that as the time we got rid of our microwave and we got rid of our t- well, I think our toaster had broken. We didn't replace them because my my shiny new kitchen looked beautiful. And it was really easy then because everything had been cleared when the new kitchen went in. It was really easy not to put it in. So I think that's like things like the books, you know, buy your new ward, your bookcase. And and it's easy to only put the ones you want on there. Yes. Not the rest. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, I just think it's, um, you know, moving house is like the perfect time where you're just going to be like, well, I'm not moving. I'm not paying somebody to move all of this stuff. And then, you know, end up just, you know, then being like, oh, I actually don't, I actually don't really want any of this stuff. I don't want to get it to a new house and then be like, oh, well, oh, now I don't want it. So, yeah. So I think it's going to be a good time. I mean, like I said, we, you know, we don't have tons anyway, but um, I think moving to some, moving somewhere else would be a really good time to just just like declutter it all and everything so um yeah I was gonna ask you um obviously in talking about minimalism as well how do you think like minimalism intersects with like sustainability and conscious consumerism you obviously mentioned about the thought process about you know when you have things coming into your home yeah um I don't know I it just all gets it's linked I don't know it all gets linked now I I've always been very environmental and not wanting to create much waste um I just I don't know it's the way I was brought up my dad worked for the environment agency so we're very nature-based as kids and you know David Attenborough is is my idol like and all that kind of stuff so it's always been on my radar um not to not to waste like just just not to use more than we we need to use um but I think it has become even more so I think with the plastic everything around plastic I don't know I just see it in just see it everywhere now I think I like I said with my walk around the shop the other day all I could see was just just rubbish like I could see it as rubbish almost um and just think thinking about yeah this stuff's been processed it's been transported here it's going to go some you know be transported in someone's car or on the bus back to their house and then eventually it's going to end up in the rubbish it's going to be in some landfill somewhere um possibly not in our country possibly in some poor country elsewhere that we've paid for them to take our rubbish um and I don't know I just it just yeah I, I it is a really big part of the minimalism for me but the actual not creating that not adding to to that waste unnecessarily um and obviously I'm not perfect like <laughs> we do we do get plastic in our house um we do we do buy things that we probably didn't need could have done without um partly because we we've succumbed to you know, that advertising partly because we we wanted it sometimes because actually cost sometimes is you know we we like say we're not huge income family so we can't sometimes justify spending more money on something so the cheaper stuff often comes with with more waste more packaging um but yeah it, it i think they are all linked together and just i don't know i can't really separate separate the two anymore i don't think i think it is just so inclined it is just stuff yeah absolutely I think this you know um in terms of our um like you know the stuff that we we consume as well we you know like you say it, it's difficult you know plastic does come in and I, I notice it particularly I think with kids stuff you know like one in a plastic ring like you say like we 
dinosaur rings or or whatever and yeah it, it is really difficult when we're, we're not perfect you know we, you know there are some things that we do that I think like oh you know I'm doing this well you know like we use cloth nappies on the children or you know and cloth wipes and things but then you know in other areas you know it's it's not so great just as an example where we live in our block of flats doesn't recycle there is no facility to recycle all of my rubbish goes into just general rubbish it just goes into a black sack <laughs> whenever I go somewhere else I go on holiday and I'm recycling and I'm like oh my goodness <laughs> like you know because I don't have to do it and like where my mum lives just down the road in a house recycles obviously because everybody else has to do it and it's like you know where we live I guess there's I don't know I don't know why we just get out of it we shouldn't um but also you know I know you could argue well you could take it to a recycling point but you know it's really also that's very difficult in everyday life to be able to it's a bit different like taking your yogurt pots to your bin out the front of your house versus having to get it, take all of your yogurt pots in the car and and so you know it's not not that simple so um definitely not perfect there because there's no way for me to 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 do that well um so yeah it just I think it just sort of ebbs and flows and I don't know if that's common in blocks of flats that you know they don't have to recycle because they don't have the facility to so yeah it's just um it's it blows my mind it blows my mum's mind as well she's like I, I still can't I've been like we've lived here for seven seven years and yeah it's just mad that like we've never had to recycle anything and so yeah she's always like uh, I'm over here sorting out my yogurt pots and the cartons and this goes to <laughs> this one and you know we obviously you know the, it's the right thing to do but you know that it's not a possibility for everybody I don't I don't even know like I don't know anybody else that doesn't recycle um, yeah it's hard so, isn't it but yeah. I suppose in some ways there's a there is a there is a benefit because I think for recycling yeah yeah it's great but actually it's stopping the stuff in the first place that, yes. that's going to make the real impact and actually if you can't recycle it you don't have that that easy like actually it's going out it's going to be recycled so it's magically all okay um because it's not <laughs> like there's those lorries picking up the recycling and what they do to it, it it's still not great yeah. um it's better than nothing but actually it does I suppose when you can't easily easily recycle it it does make you probably think a bit more about what you're bringing yeah. in because probably yeah. is it's more I don't know painful is probably the wrong word because you can't do anything about it like you said but yeah you might think a bit more about what you're bringing in because yeah if we can't once it's once it's out of our house and it's gone like like I say when you're de decluttering sometimes you just need to do it and on in the in the big scheme of things you're going to not buy as much like long term so yes yeah, some things might just have to go in the bin or just go to the dump but hopefully long term it's going to be better um but there is that bit of once it's out you kind of forget about it and it it's still there somewhere <laughs> yeah yes it is you know like I'm sure we've all seen like the pictures of like clothes mountains across like is it in like Chile or somewhere like that in South America where it's just like can even be seen from space and yeah. we kind of think that you know once it's once it's left our house like poof, it's gone <laughs> But, you know, it still exists and it's the same, you know, one of the reasons we did cloth nappies. Now, I know that's not for everybody, but, you know, cloth, the cloth, the the plastic nappies that I used as a baby are still out there in landfill somewhere. And, you know, of course, it's nice to be able to wrap it all up and forget about it. Um, but, you know, it, they just you just think, you know, how how many nappies children go through and you know it was one of the things that our local council did at the time when I had my daughter they did um a cloth nappy scheme so you got like five free cloth nappies and you know so we've done two children with our cloth nappies and you know my 
my son is getting to the point where he doesn't need nappies for much longer um and I'm so excited about the fact that I am going to get rid of my entire stash of cloth nappies I cannot wait to get them out of my house because they do take up a lot of room (laughs) and yeah but like you said about um recycling and stuff is that you know we are very conscious in like the cardboard that we bring in generally goes to our allotment and we put it down on the grounds this time of year to you know try and cover it up a bit for winter we recycle um like our coffee granules and food waste we've got compost heaps there so that does help so we do what we can to you know try and minimalize that but you know inevitably things do come in we as a family eat meat that generally comes in a plastic container so that is you know something that is you know just has to go straight in the bin and yeah it's it ebbs and flows I guess doesn't it it's about being that imperfectness it's like you can't you can't be perfect um and there's there's no point kind of aiming for that because because you will fail like and it's it's okay to go actually in this we're not we're not as good as we could be but in this way we're really nailing it we're doing great in this bit well maybe we could work a bit harder and improve this area and it's just yeah being being kind to yourself isn't it and doing yeah doing enough that that's the right amount for you at that at this point in your life you know when you've got teenagers you might be able to drive your recycling to or you might not even be there anymore but like (laughs) you'd have more time or you could pay them to go and take the recycling down to the local shop you know (laughs) things things change so yeah yeah it's um yeah you know good in some areas not so great in others and and me and my husband sometimes talk about this that you know like we we like generally people just us everyday people you know we we do try our best don't we we do the cloth nappies we recycle stuff we are putting stuff in compost heat we you know we have um you know reusable like period pants and you know sanitary towels all these sorts of things that we do try and do our best in and there is so many aeroplanes floating above our heads (laughs) all the time chucking out all sorts you know of fuel into the atmosphere like and we're all doing our best down here but we can't necessarily fight the external factors that continue to exist so yeah I'm I'm a complete aviation gear case to work on aeroplanes and so I've got a little app I'm always on the app like look how many planes fly over and you know once you start zooming out and you see Europe like just chock-a-block with planes and then you're like and we have to recycle our yogurt pots (laughs) like you know the people in power don't care do they you know for a lot of these things with fossil fuels and everything so you know we we us doing our best is you know all we can do really well it's been so wonderful to have you on the podcast and come and share with us your all your approaches to living a more minimal life so where can the listeners connect with you online um well I'm on Instagram I I don't do loads on there to be fair but people are welcome to to come and find me I'm at Devon life with three um that's with an underscore between each each of the words and three is a number um it's so complicated aren't they these (laughs) these Instagram (laughs) names um but yeah so I'm on there I mostly share bits about my home edit with my kids and little bits glimpses of minimalism as well but um, yeah welcome to come and come and message me or find me on there excellent and I will I will link it with the episode as well so thank you so much for coming on and taking time to come and talk with me oh my goodness that was just such an amazing episode it is so fun always I always feel so so lucky that I get to speak to such amazing people on this podcast and just delve into those nitty-gritty everyday conversations that people like me and you are having all over this world so Thank you so much for joining me, Jenny, but also thank you guys, the listeners, for joining me as well. I appreciate you guys so much. You are 
the absolute stars of this podcast. I'm just here waffling as usual. Um, But I appreciate each and every one of you that listens to this podcast and just takes the time to yeah have me in your headphones in your earbuds wherever i am cars <laughs> kitchens whatever that looks like for you so thank you guys so much and so as always if you want to follow me over on instagram you can find me there at the slow living collective you can find me on the blog which is the slow living collective.com you can find me or you might find me on tiktok um I'm sporadic there but that is pretty much the same as Instagram so if you follow me on Instagram you'll get all the good stuff um I'm just the slow living collective everywhere I have streamlined myself into being the slow living collective everywhere so whatever platform you're on come find me I am the slow living collective um, but I am most active on Instagram so that's probably the best place to come and locate me other than my blog So with that long wittering on (laughs) uh, outro, I will let you get on with the rest of your day, week, month, year, etc. Thank you again so much for listening and I will catch you in the next episode.